Hello and welcome back to another exciting week on Talking With Experts podcast with your host Chris Cowden. This week I've got Giuseppe Grammatico, otherwise known as GG the Franchise Guide, to share a little bit more about franchise ownership and uh, whether it's the right business for you. So I hope you get a lot out of this and learn a little bit more about franchising industry and the benefits of it if you're in a corporate career and uh, you, you want to escape it or you want to have a side hustle then maybe franchising is the opportunity for you so thank you uh, Giuseppe for joining me this week on talking with experts podcast and for being kind of like in the background uh, or on a from a distance helping me and encouraging me and being on my waiting list so if someone did cancel like they did you were there to say you know what I want to have a place so I appreciate you for wanting to be on the podcast and for being patient with me and finding how you can get involved. Um, Today, I wanted to talk to you about your business, um, uh, talking about franchises and how to how how an aspiring entrepreneur could could start in the franchise world or if it's for somebody who has enough experience and wants to wants to buy a franchise and all the risks involved in make starting with the foundation so before we go into that please introduce yourself what is your expertise but i kind of already know it um but the floor is yours great chris thank thanks for having me i was uh, looking forward to it i'm always always glad to fill in as well so i would love to uh i'd love to talk as i chewed your ear off uh prior to the show so um what do i do so i'm a franchise coach and consultant uh, how did I get into this and, and kind of what exactly is that? So I was a unhappy corporate executive. I uh, did not like my job. I had a two and a half hour commute every single day. And I just, I couldn't do it anymore, right? I, I, I was thinking of moving and, and changing jobs. And I just working with a career coach or a, I should say more of a life coach Mm-hmm. Uh, she had told me that uh, that really won't make much of a difference. Go out and, and interview, but that's not going to make much of a difference. It sounds like you really want to be on your own as you mm-hmm. were in the family restaurant and the business that we had growing up. So I knew that wasn't the business given the nights and weekends, and I knew there, were, there had to be something else. So I dug deep, uh, kind of came across franchising and said, wow, this is interesting. I, the Kind of like the we have you know the big big franchise back then was and it still is but uh, Subway oh. there's a Subway in every corner I'm sure you have them there as well mm-hmm. and um, and everywhere else and I said okay this is interesting the the system is already created for you I'm not a I don't consider myself a creative person and long story short I said okay it's it's franchising systems in place I can kind of run with them. Mm-hmm. And I explored that work with a, ironically, a franchise coach and consultant back in 2005 and uh, 2006. And we said, okay, this is, uh, you know, this is the right fit for me. We just have to kind of figure out what that first franchise is. But the goal I said is number one, I'm doing this because I have a baby on the way. So this Mm. is uh, 2007. My my son was going to be born later that year. So I said, I'm doing this so that I could be home and actually be with them and present with my family. So um, that journey, that process really inspired me to the point where I invested in my first few, uh, two franchises uh, in 2007 and said, I really want to become a franchise coach and consultant, which I am today. Mm-hmm. So what we do is simply we help p- people figure out kind of what their vision is, you know, where they want to be in the next one, three, five, 10 years mm-hmm. and uh, figure out if business ownership is just the right fit for them. And, um, you know, there's various vehicles, obviously, but obviously being a business owner, being an employee, maybe a hybrid approach, a combination. So, um, you know, figuring out, okay, business ownership is, is franchising the right mm-hmm. fit. Do you want the business built for you or do you want to start from scratch? And, just get clear, clear on vision, get, get a business ownership under their belt if they're a good fit. And then we do a deep dive as to what the ideal business looks like, ideal life looks like, put them all together and uh, figure out two or three franchise concepts that, that basically match what their ideal life looks like. I'm glad you were, when you were talking, I was like, oh, please say Subway because I've got a, a bit of a funny story. Um, maybe when I was 12 or so, my dad wanted to get into franchising and um, he's always 
are looking for options, right. but not willing to take a huge risk on something. He, he's an accountant by trade, so he knows his numbers very yeah. well. And he goes, oh, the, uh, I, I, like, I, like, I like what Subway's doing because they, they hadn't really built a, str- a, like a place in the market. Right. Or maybe they had, but it was maybe like 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he said, if I can get in now, then I'm going to do really well. And he doesn't, so he's an accountant, but he just said, no, I'm not going to do that. Then there was another opportunity with a bed and breakfast that he wanted to buy like a bed and breakfast, but that wasn't a franchise. Mm-hmm. What I'm getting at is you mentioned Subway. So it reminded me of uh, my dad trying to get into the franchise world. And maybe that's where we can lead into how, how risky is a, a franchise starting a franchise or buying into a franchise. Right. And, and by the way, that's that's normal with Subway because most people think of food when they think of franchises. So I kind of open up their world as to other options. So, you know, risk, that's a so I'll, I'll answer it this way. So no matter what, if a franchise is a proven business model, but you still have to do your due diligence and we help mm-hmm. all our candidates figuring out, OK, it, it sounds it's you may like the product or service, but let's really figure out what you want in a business and mm-hmm. then figure out the franchises that basically match that ideal business, ideal life. So uh, franchi- a franchise could be risky if the due diligence is not done correctly. And what I always say is not every franchise is built the same. Mm-hmm. So you may have two uh, residential cleaning franchises, but they may be completely different on how they run their business, the lead generation, how long they've been in business, mm-hmm. and how, how they support their franchisees. So typically, if you do your due diligence and, and uh, the franchise checks off all the boxes, uh, you know, you're, with that due diligence, you're going to speak with existing franchisees. So I think that's mm-hmm. one way to kind of mitigate your risk is not just talking directly to the franchise company, which is great. They're going to give you the agreement. They're going to tell you uh, the parameters, the investment, all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, let me talk to existing franchisees that are yes. currently in the business and say, hey, the million dollar question, uh, knowing what you know now, would you do it all over again? And um, you may get some negative and you may get some positive, which is fine. But ask around, talk to five, five, six, seven, ten franchisees. So I think that is one way to kind of minimize the risk. And I think you're, you know, overall, and I don't know about statistics and I, and I really don't like statistics because they're almost irrelevant, mm-hmm. um, you know, in, in franchising, because again, it's not really an industry. It's just a proven business model. So I think if you find if you find not just a a strong franchise, but you have to find the franchise that matches you, right? It's all about Mm -hmm. sustainability. It's about a business that maybe you can see yourself doing in 10 years, not, you know, a subway, I'm not knocking subway, but just to bring them up where you see the money, but then you kind of get burnt out because you in your ideal world, you didn't want to work nights and weekends and have 50 employees. So I think there's a lot of factors, figuring out the right franchise for you, speaking with the franchisees and things like that. And, and I think it increases your, your success in the business because at the end of the day, you also have that support structure. You have the model yeah. in place and then you have a coach. You have someone that you can ask questions to. Uh, some franchise companies, again, they're all structured differently. Uh, will have a call center answering your phones. They may be, it may offer turnkey marketing versus just offering you the asset to distribute this is, we're going to do it all for you. We just want you to oversee it. It's a proven model. So I think if you find, do your due diligence, find the right match for you. I think it increases um, your success exponentially. So dad did his uh, due diligence and decided not to do it. So uh, that was, that was a safe, safe, well, that was the, probably the best decision for him to do. And thanks for going over some of those risks. You mentioned before about something like hybrid i'm unfamiliar with that could you explain more about what hybrid means in this instance yeah i I hybrid or or we call it a semi-absentee so in our in our world there's a lot of myths right oh franchising is all about restaurants franchising and because of that it's millions of dollars in investments which is far from the truth uh in the u.s i can't speak globally but in the u.s there's over 4,000 franchise companies in every industry, uh, every, every investment level. So, so you don't need millions of dollars. There are franchises for under $100,000. There are 
uh, numerous ways to, to finance, including your uh, retirement. And there's mm. no penalties. That's, no, that's the other myth. So a lot of what I do is kind of squashing these myths that are out there. So uh, with that being said, the hybrid or what I call semi-absentee approaches, yes, you can have a job, full-time job, you know, have your corporate career and have a side business, have that mm -hmm. franchise. It's not about, well, I have lots of money and, and, and all that kind of stuff. That's great. You, you typically have a larger investment because you may be hiring a, an employee, maybe a general manager to run the business. But at the end of the day, a lot of franchises do not allow semi-absentee ownership. They really know their model. They kind of have their ideal franchise candidate. Maybe that's someone that's working the business full-time. Um, they're mm. giving 100% of their attention and they realize that. So that's, that's part of their vetting process is they want, they'll tell you from the very first conversation, they want you to be full-time in the business. So, but there are numerous franchises that allow you to keep your job. They are built for semi-absentee ownership. Um, many of them don't want you in the business. They want you working <laughs> on, not in the business, as they say, mm -hmm. and hiring the general manager is your first hire. They'll, they'll even take the step in, and help you find that, that general manager to run the business. So uh, can you have both? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. is it, it, you know, and semi-absentee, we classify 10 to 20 hours a week. It's just a range. There's no science or math behind it. But um, there are people that I know that work less in the very beginning, you probably work a little bit more since you're getting everything set up, finding the yeah. key employees. So, but the hybrid model is just not, or I don't even know if it's called a model, but just not spending too much time in the business. You, you're there to invest in the franchise, but to, to stay out of the running of it and the operational side. Yeah. There, so there, there's two people. There's a, like to your point, the more of the investor instead of uh, stock market, it's been crazy. So do we invest in the stock market where we have zero control aside from where we can allocate the funds, but no underlying control of these companies. Um, so that's an, that's more of an investment. So let me just invest in a business that I can control mm -hmm. or it's someone that maybe is a little fearful financially. Uh, they are not ready to let go of their benefits that they have right now, which is, which is fine. Again, mm -hmm. there is no, you know, one size fits all one is better. It, it depends on your circumstances you may just be the only person in your household uh, with an income that's providing all the health benefits. So, uh, so it may be something to where you're putting in 20 hours a week and then say, okay, in the first year, we're, we're just hypothetically, we're profitable. Things are going well. Now I can transition full-time, grow this business much faster and leave my job since now I have that base that we're, we're now, you know, generating revenue, generating profit. And I can now run that business full-time and leave the job. So some people set it up as a six to, 12 month transition period. Yeah. So instead of just one person buying into a franchise, is there a way that other people that also want to get into franchise can do it, but as a group, I don't know what sure. that word is called, but you know, uh, going in together. Right. Yeah. There, there is a, um, actually I'm working with uh, two groups right now. They're just investment groups and their goal is essentially to pool their money, their resources, uh, and their expertise and connections. Uh, syndicate. And, yeah. A syndicate. That's right. Yes. <laughs> syndicate invest. Yeah. There, there's, there, there's, there's, you know, people call them holding companies. It, it all depends on there are, there are groups that just do it as an investment and they have their general managers beneath them running the business. So it's more of a kind of like a board of directors and, mm -hmm. you know, they have their teams underneath them. And then, then we have other, we have an, another investment team that are in the process of, of their due diligence. They're actually going to be hands-on in the business. So they're all investors, but they're actually, one is going to be at the storefront or one is going to be you know, going and doing the networking events at the Chamber of Commerce and all the other various events. So yeah, there, there's a lot of that. And it's nice because each person, they don't just bring money, but they'll bring connections, they'll bring um, a different skill sets. So you have someone that's really good at managing employees, mm -hmm. whereas the other person's a sales animal, and he's going out there, you know, B2B grabbing new business. So it is, uh, it is very common. And it's also a way to diversify your risk a little bit because you pull mm -hmm. the money everyone has a role. I always say hire an attorney in the very beginning so that it is very clear. It's not assumed, you know, friends and, and family are great, but you, I, you know, I don't care if it's friends, family, whoever it is, your children, your spouse, just have everything lined up in the event. 
there are some changes or a shakeup in the business, have it outlined in black and white as to everyone's role, ownership, who gets distributions, what happens if something happens to you and mm -hmm. you disappear or something and who's ta who takes over the business. So uh, very common. I, I see that uh, more and more today. Yeah, the legal side of it. I need to get a, a legal expert on, on here for sure. 100%. Yeah, um, I, I highly recommend that. Yeah, so so there's a few more things that I want to talk to you about today. And, and that was um, your book, The Franchise Freedom. Can, can you explain what, why you wrote a book and, uh, and what, what's the benefit to its readers? Yeah, I wrote, I wrote the book. It, it just a lot of, a lot of things I wanted to tell people. And sometimes in a video or a podcast, it's a lot. So I wanted it just to, everyone absorbs information differently. Uh, we recently did a, a podcast, which is kind of an audio version of it, but wanted to talk to people about number one, we talk about franchising, but it goes back to figuring out your vision, figuring out um, if business ownership is the right fit, if, if franchising is the right fit, kind of what we were talking about before and um, simplifying it. Just, it's not, stop, stop looking at brands, stop going crazy and, and reading all this stuff online and, and wasting countless hours like I did. Um, the, the true way, uh, and I admit it, you know, I'm not, I'm not perfect and I made a lot of these mistakes that I see people make daily. I wanna buy an ice cream franchise, why? you know, I like ice cream. It's like, well, you can own a cleaning franchise and buy all the ice cream you want. You don't necessarily have to be in that business um, or people get in, do their hobbies as a passion. And I challenge that. I go, if you're, I'm a, I'm a soccer fanatic, but I would never own a soccer franchise. That's my escape. <laughs> so, you know, my, my, you know, get clear on your passion. We talk about that. So your passion is not soccer or football and they call it you know calcio and so you know in italy they you know every everyone has a different term for, for i don't know why we call it soccer to be honest with you should football. be called football but that, that's a whole nother topic <laughs> i'll get uh i'll get you know what for but you know figure the passion is not football or soccer the passion is spending you know freedom it's the time with family the financial freedom so i take my kids to as many games as i want you know and and watch the football in my own time so you don't necessarily have to incorporate football or soccer into your business. So it was really just my ideas. It was, let me get it all out on paper and show people that they can have it all. You know, you don't have to look at Subway and then say, okay, I didn't want to work nights and weekends. They require it. Okay. That's I'll, I'll suck it up. <laughs> I, don't, I only wanted five employees. I need 50. I'll suck it up. Mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden you have a business that it's not a great fit for you, right? You're, you're compromising. Why, why the hell compromise when you can have a business that fits what you want? So I, I always encourage everyone, my best advice is not reading about franchising or business ownership. Forget all that. Mm -hmm. Get a blank piece of paper. Um, we were jokingly, my, uh, we were on vacation. We were watching Bob Ross. You know, he starts with the canvas and then he turns it into this beautiful mm -hmm. uh, painting in, in 30 minutes. It's amazing. So get your canvas, your, your blank piece of paper and figure out where do you want to be working? Are, 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 are you in the UK? Are you in, in the United States? Where in the United States or where in Europe? Um, are you working from home? You know, I, I work from home. I have that luxury. Or are you, do you have a key and you're putting in a lock and going to a retail location? Figure that out. What do your employees look like? Are they high turnover? Are they high skilled? Are they 10, 1099 here? You know, they're contractors with their own businesses or are they W-2 uh, direct employees? Figure all that out. Once you figure all that out, I, I help you with that. And you, you can do it on your own, but I can ask you all the questions. We summarize it into a model or a, a guide or roadmap. And then, and then we look at the businesses that fit that. Much, yeah. much different, right? Not, yeah. not overwhelming. You pick what you want, not what I need to change in my life because I need to meet this franchise's requirements and say, okay, I want to be 20 hours a week. I want to work in New Jersey. I want this, 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 and that. Then we find the franchises that, that match that. And then you continue. That's where you continue your due diligence. Say, okay, it checked off all the boxes. Now I have to ask those questions to get comfortable. And now to, you know, maybe bring, you know, bring down those three franchises down to two and then down to one. So so much easier, less overwhelming. Remember, 4,000 franchise companies in the US, you can mm. spend your entire life researching them. By the time yeah. you're done researching, you'll be dead. 
I mean, it, yeah, it's history. It's history. <laughs> but, yeah. I, so it's just a compilation of what you've done and what you've learned and uh, some of the the theory, but it's more just just going after what you really want, but not if you like ice cream, don't buy into an ice. So so I know you mentioned there's four thousand franchising like industries companies. or companies. How do you choose the right one? I know we've kind of touched on that, but can you go into more detail? Yeah, I mean, we, we so that, that's part of kind of what we do is what, what um, you know, what type of owner do you want to be? Do you want to be full-time or that hybrid semi-absentee mm-hmm. owner? If you say, well, a hybrid semi-absentee, that cuts the universe, just say down in half right there. And then we look at investment levels. Uh, I'm part of, uh, you know, we, we uh, I'm part of an organization called Franchise and they do not do the due diligence for each of our candidates, but they're doing a pre-screen and they're looking for, they're, they're meeting with uh, the franchise companies. They are not contacting everyone, but they're doing a random selection and talking to franchisees to make sure they're happy. Mm-hmm. They're getting support. Uh, they read the franchise agreement. They want to make sure there's not a lots of issues that they have the infrastructure right? Because there's a lot of strong systems all over the world. But once they hit 50 or 100 franchises, they fall apart because they don't have the infrastructure to support mm. those people. I've seen that time and time again. So they'll work with a select group of, uh, you know, I say basically top tier franchise companies. And um, yeah, I mean, just getting select. So every decision you make, if you say, well, I don't want to work with, um, I want to work with highly skilled employees, well, that's, that rules out only, you know, maybe I only want to have two or three uh, employees to start. That's going to ru- rule out pretty much all the food service. So mm. again, a decision you make and, and it narrows the universe. Uh, our goal is to narrow it down to two or three companies. Investment level two, I have guys that love standalone buildings and real estate and investment. And then you look at and, and, um, restaurant franchises and you look at their investment level and it's like, well, you have, what is it? Champagne taste on a beer budget. So <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, we, we, we can send you to our funding partner that will help you explore all your options. And maybe it's you become part of an investment group or get a partner or just a one investor to kind of help you out. But in many cases, they can't afford it. So mm-hmm. you, you start out with maybe a employment service franchise, and then maybe your next business is retail. If that's really a great match for you. But I always challenge people to say, what are you looking at? They tell mm-hmm. me food. I ask why. And they say, well, everyone's got to eat. There's the, and I say, okay, that, that means you're, you're really looking, looking for a business that has high demand. Did you know that, you know, other business, there are other franchises that yeah. offer it. Guess what? Employment services right now is huge. Why not look at employment services, uh, mm-hmm. you know, business coaching. There's so much demand for that right now, given COVID and a lot of small businesses kind of pivoting and transitioning. So um, so yeah, so, you know, be, when you're selective, not, I'm not saying so selective where it's, it's only have, it only has to have one employee and I don't want to drive more than two minutes from my house. Mm. Now we're getting a little specific, but yeah. once you get clear on what you want, that universe shrinks and you'll be surprised at how quickly we can find a few companies that match that. And what kind of tools or support I, do you recommend people look at or use when they going to buy into a, a franchisee or franchise? Yeah. So, um, you know, so I always recommend first speak with a, a funding, my funding contact, she'll walk you through all your options. So you, it's like buying a home. You want to have a budget, right? What, am, what, what can I get approved for? What are the options out there? Many cases you have no idea. Like most people don't know you can use your retirement. Um, working with someone like myself, I'm not the only franchise coach and consultant that does this. Find a good fit. It's uh, we work closely. We work technically forever together. Um, I have I have people contacting me years later saying I want to grow and expand my business. What do you recommend? Should I buy another territory, another franchise? Um, and putting together a good team, hiring. I talk about this in my book: the accountant, the financial advisor, the attorney. Hopefully, a great a franchise uh, coach and consultant, but. Hiring that team, but not only hiring that team, but also a team that works together so they can look out for your best interest. So you set up the correct legal structure and the accounting, you know, there's Mm. two forms of accounting, 
and putting all that together. So a team that could communicate with one another. Um, I will help you throughout the way uh, as far as questions to ask the franchise companies, items to consider. You're going to be speaking with all these franchisees later on towards the end of your uh, due diligence process. But um, you know, I, I would just say get clear on, on what you're looking for. Start looking at put, putting together this team for your business. You don't have to wait till you find the business. You can hire the team now in anticipation of, of setting up that business. And um, that's basically it. You know, mm -hmm. once you start, I think the trap or the, what do they call it? The, uh, the rabbit hole is you start looking at all these franchise companies and the rankings and this and that, which is great. But what does that, what does that mean? It means mm. to me, it means absolutely nothing. It's a hot franchise. Um, okay. Is it a fad? Is it, is it a, a, a company that even fits what I'm looking for? Sometimes it's the perfect fit. It's not a fad. It checks off all the boxes. It, you do all the research, you spend countless uh, hours to find out your market, the whole state of New Jersey is sold out. And that's, that's what I bring to the table. I do all that behind the scenes for mm -hmm. you so that not your due diligence, but you know, are, is the, is the, uh, are you guys a good fit franchise company and, and the candidate is the territory available? Do you meet the financial requirements? Uh, how, how much would it, you know, yeah, you know, wouldn't be a good thing that you do all this research, I'm trying to keep it clean, but you do all this research to find out your whole territory, your whole market is, is sold out. That's frustrating. You just wasted mm. all those hours and time. So um, keep keeping it simple. What is it? Kiss keep keep it simple. Stupid is yeah. someone told me uh, <laughs> yeah. years ago, and and uh, I've just you know I'm like, what do you, what does that even mean? Keep it. You know, of course, you want to keep things simple, but yep. I think the internet is just a you know too much information and. You need someone to kind of help you put that information in motion, clarify it. That's why coaching is huge. You know, mm -hmm. accountability. What do you do with that information? And that's uh, a part I play. I'm not a full business coach. That's not my role. My role is to help you along the way. I always recommend a coach. But um, yeah, that's. I, ho I hope that answered your question. No, no, that definitely. Yeah, it, no, it does. Uh, and I, and I hope the listeners understand what it really takes. Is to, to run a franchise or own a business uh, are there any, did you when you first started in the franchising area what were your biggest what did you underestimate the most what i underestimate um it's a good question i've never i worked in the family business and i never uh, hired employees before directly i mm -hmm. work with new employees so you know, employees, obviously in any business, you're going to have employees. They're the lifeblood of the business. Um, not that we um, treated our, our, our employees uh, poorly in any way. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we did everything we could, small business. Um, we offered the flexibility. I came from a large company. So I said, I'm going to do the, I'm going to, I'm going to treat my employees and give them flexibility because life happens, right? Things happen. Um, someone gets engaged, a death in the family, not someone's not feeling well, we no problem, you know, we always had a, a kind of that support structure, but, you know, hiring employees looking out, you know, not just a job post, but who are the right employees. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'd have to say some some hires, maybe it was because there was so much going on, I wish maybe I took a little bit more time in that approach. But um, that's definitely important take taking your time hiring a, a really good staff. And we've had some great employees over the years. I think that's, that's crucial. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, mm -hmm. and then, you know, figuring all out, you don't have to, you don't have to know anything about your franchise or industry. You should research it. Obviously you don't need to be an expert. Um, you know, I got into building maintenance and commercial cleaning. My career prior to that was in wall street and investments had no, there was no correlation, no <laughs> anything, but I knew that I wanted something that, was recession resistant, right? We clean hospital area, areas of hospitals, dialysis, surgery center. So I wanted something that was always in demand. So um, yep. always learning, you know? Because, because it's like always a learning process. Yeah, exactly. When you said everybody's got to eat, uh, a lot of people get ill. So <laughs> a lot of people are in the hospital. Right. And there's always a COVID or not, you know, there, there's always mm. a need, there's always surgeries, there's always need for certain services and cer certain services I was shocked that did really well. And so, you know, I definitely, I'm, I'm definitely learning certain things I thought were more of a 
luxury did actually really well during COVID, during when the market <laughs> crashed in 2008. So uh, I'm learning as I'm going on as well. So yeah, you, everybody's an expert in something. So that's yeah. why I like having so many <laughs> different people on the show. Uh, I like to leave people with, um, you know, I'd like to give the expert the, the chance to share three or or three actionable steps for people to take if, if they want to buy into a franchise or they're, they're at that stage where they have a franchise and they want to grow the business. What actionable steps could you give them to that they could take today? Yeah, so, uh, so I would say going, going back to your vision, what – what's your end goal? What, what, you know, what are we doing fast forward five, five or 10 years? So it could be for the person that is buying their first franchise or, or, or buying additional wanting to expand. So going back to the vision, we'll say the five or 10 year vision to see what do I want? And now where am I at now? So if you're, if you're stuck at the corporate job and uh, you're trying to figure out what to do, I just told you, you can have a job mm -hmm. and have the business. So there's no more excuses. There's no more internet research. Work with a, a great franchise coach and consultant. I only work with candidates in, in the US and Canada. I don't, you know, we don't cover the entire world, but there are other great mm -hmm. coaches and consultants out there. And in my opinion, I don't think what I don't think it makes a difference what where you're from or or where you live. I think the advice is going to be similar. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, I mean, hiring the coach or consultant, don't just, don't just, you don't just have to settle or, or work with the first person you talk to interview them, make sure they're a good fit. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, and, and some people may disagree and that's fine. You know, I'm not, you know, we're, we're, we're here just having a conversation, but find out if they own the business, right? How do you, how are you giving me advice? If you've never owned the, a business, some of the advice is going to be similar, but just talking about, Hey, I didn't pay myself the first year the, uh, or the first, I'm sorry, not the first year, the first month or two. Um, that wasn't easy. Let me explain how I got through that. That's mm -hmm. pretty hard to have that conversation if, if you've never experienced it versus hearing it on a podcast or, or, yeah. or, or somewhere else. And um, the other, the other thing, which is off the topic of franchising is just kind of get, um, get your schedule in order. I talk about this all the time. I worked with a coach, I use Google Calendar and put your priority stuff on there. I put all the important stuff on there, date night or, or lunch uh, with my wife, uh, soccer practice, soccer games, whatever event or, at the kid's school. Mm -hmm. Put there on a priority working out, which is the one thing I need to work on if I'm 100% <laughs> honest. So anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but, you know, we're talking about accountability, right? Mm -hmm. So put on there, you know, one hour a day, maybe it's your lunch break at work that you will make for that one hour. You will work with your franchise coach. If uh, you are working with a coach, you're working on what the ideal business uh, looks like putting down your, your wish list. Um, you know, what you, what you see yourself doing in the business, right? Mm -hmm. So you find the business, but what are you doing? Are you doing sales? Are you doing networking? Do you just like to do the bookkeeping or the financials? So I think scheduling and it's, a meeting. There's no like, all right, I'm going to move it this day because so-and-so wants to meet or now from 12 to 1 PM, this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm researching it just like any other thing I'm prioritizing on my calendar. Everyone that can see your calendar sees it just as meeting. You don't have to call anything else and prioritize that time because if you don't make it a priority and necessity, this is just going to be a wish. This yeah. is going to be 10 years down the road you're 50, you're 60, you're 70, whatever your age is. And you're like, Oh, I should have did this. Or maybe yeah. I'll look into it. It's never going to happen. So prioritize it. There's a lot of tire kickers. There's a lot of people that, you know, like the idea that do nothing about it. So take the approach. Franchising isn't for everyone. Uh, but all the information I can guarantee you will all be given to you within the first couple of weeks of speaking with the franchise company. You may need a few more weeks to speak with franchisees. But in, in 30 days, you'll have all the information you need to make that decision. It's not saying that a franchise is 30 days and, and then you make a decision, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You make a decision. Yes, no, or it may be yes, and you still have to finalize funding. It may be no, I don't like the business, or maybe business ownership isn't the right fit for me, but just make a decision and make it a priority. Because if you don't have 
an hour a day to invest towards this, my advice to you, stay at your job, don't even bother. That's pretty yeah. direct advice. But how are you going to run a business if you don't have five hours a week to invest? Um, I don't have time to read your book. I'm not, I don't have time for the calls. What franchise doesn't work that way. You, you, mm -hmm. you are just setting yourself up for failure. Save your money. Just maybe invest it in the stock market. Um, I would avoid uh, business ownership because you're going to be putting in a lot more than five hours. So yes, I call it, That's I call it tough love uh, from, uh, from uh, <laughs> GG or G or whatever you want to call me, but that's the truth. I, I, you know, I, uh, hopefully I can save everyone listening a lot of time and aggravation. So, yeah. And it doesn't need to take um, thousands of books of reading. It just needs to take 30 days of commitment, but, um, and it, you, if you're going to do something or build a business or do anything like start a podcast or anything, you've got to invest a certain mm -hmm. amount of time into it and, but prioritize what's important, like family, friends, but don't overspend it. Yeah, lots of right. great advice. Exactly. Read a so, few books. Yeah. yeah read a few books. Don't, yeah. Don't go, don't go crazy. That's just, you're just inundating yourself with ways to buy time. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing it? What's that motivation? Mine was to spend, if I, if I kept my job, I would never see my, my kids. That's mm -hmm. the God honest truth. I worked eight hours a day in my job, but between the commute, it turned into 13, 14 hours. So make the decision. If it's business ownership, is it a franchise or not? We, that you can figure out. And then you start doing your, your, your research, get clear on what you want, start to do diligence. And then you got to make a decision. There's no more, I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking about? If you're thinking <laughs> about it and you need another month or two to make that decision, your why isn't strong enough. Mm -hmm. If it's just to make a few extra bucks, all right, is that really a strong why? Is it to financial freedom because you're working 12 hours a day and not going anywhere within the company and want to take control. That's, that's a pretty strong why. Yeah. So um, fig, figure, figure all that out. You don't need a book for that. Maybe you need a coach to keep you accountable for that mm -hmm. and make sure, make sure you're doing it. But um, you know, just, just do it. You, you, you live once empower yourself talking and listening to the shows like this and just make the decision to make the change and don't listen to anyone else, you know, just do what, <laughs> is inside you. People told me I was crazy leaving a six figure salary, you know, a full compensation position. Uh, did I make six figures my first year? No, I did not. Um, it wasn't even a full year, but uh, second year much better. And now you have you can now I just sold my, my uh, two businesses last year, mm -hmm. um, for a multiple of what I paid, you know, or, or what what I was making from the business. So you have to factor that in as well. And your accountant can walk you through all the, uh, the benefits. Yep. Thank you for all those little lessons. And uh, after every, from the whole episode, what is one lesson you would like to leave our listeners with today? The one lesson is, and, and this is actually, yeah, so I'm glad you brought that up. So I, I think, and I was, I, I was asked this question uh, on a show previously last week. I think it's figuring out first where you want to go and then figuring out how to get there. And I think that's where people kind of, you know, it, it falls apart. They're like, okay, I want X, but I don't know how to do accounting. I don't know about finance, you know, all, all the sales and then hiring employees, all that kind of stuff. And then it, it never goes anywhere. So uh, there's a book called um, who not how by Dan Sullivan from strategic coach. And, the, and it's not about how to do it, it's about who. So you make mm -hmm. a decision and who are the people? Maybe it's the franchise. Maybe you decide not to go in a franchise, but you know some people that have certain connections that can help you put you in touch with a coach or a financial advisor or other business owners that you can network with to give you a real true kind of perspective. So figure out where you want to be, go for it, and then figure out the how afterwards. Mm -hmm. And um uh, Listen, you, you only live once. Enjoy the journey. And uh, I struggle with that. Enjoy the journey. It's not all about the end goal and retirement. Mm -hmm. Enjoy it. Um, you, you, as I mentioned, I keep saying you only live once. Life's short. So enjoy it. Have fun. And um, yeah, I mean, you're going to be doing this for quite a few hours every week. So might, might as well like what you're doing. <laughs> exactly. Right? You look, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's, you've got to enjoy the process and not not worry about the destination you're going to get there eventually but um yeah thank you thank you for your time today yeah. is there a gift or an offer you have for 
our listeners today? Absolutely. So if you go uh, directly to my website, so it's GG, my initials, because if you can see from my name, it's a mouthful. So GG, the franchise guide, G U I D E. So GG, the franchise guide.com. Uh, there is a um, click on book. I'm offering everyone listening in a um, free download of, of my book. Um, you know, take a look at it. Feel free to answer any questions. There's my podcast. We cover a different topic. So if you just have, hey, I, I really like what he had to say, but I had a question on funding. There's a funding podcast. We had an attorney on. We have different, um, different uh, professionals and people that specialize in their area. And for people that maybe aren't, don't like reading books, we have a webinar version uh, of the book on the video tab, as well as a podcast version. I mean, we did it for if your excuse is you don't like to read or you can't read or whatever the excuse is, we have an audio version and vice versa. So um, all the information is concise. It's a 30 minute read for the, for the book. So take advantage of that. And then there's a, um, my calendar link. So I offer everyone a, a 20 minute call uh, from wherever you're at, even if it's just a general franchising question or general advice. Um, and uh, best part, our services are free, as I mentioned. So there's no cost, there's no contract. For the intro call or ever um, we, we are here here to assist in any way possible for those that aren't ready let's uh, what, read the book just even if yes. you read the book and just gave me your feedback i'm working on a second one maybe next year so I'm, I'm you know if i missed anything or you'd like something included send me a message you can message me everything is right through the website really clear and simple and uh, i hope everyone enjoys it and that is gg the franchise guide.com yep Thank you, Giuseppe, for joining me this week on Talking With Experts podcast and for sharing your wisdom and knowledge on uh, the franchising industry and other non-food franchising opportunities. Thanks for sharing your wisdom and for also giving a different perspective on business and how to generate financial freedom. It was an interesting episode and for anybody who listened, if you want to grab a copy of gg's book then go to gg the forward slash book take care and i'll speak to you next week